G'day knuckleheads, Uncle Nackers here, and welcome to episode 32 of my Owner Builder series. Now, in the last episode, we applied the waterproofing membrane and laid the cement beds in all the wet areas in preparation for tiling. In this episode, we'll be actually laying the floor tiles, kicking off with the bathroom. Getting that marked out. So here we have Justin doing the shower drain. Cutting it out of the tile. Yeah, that's not going to fit. It's not going to fit? No. So we've just discovered that on the diagonal, the tile is too big to be cut on the tile cutter, so we're going to have to grind this tile. So there's our tile up close and personal, and you can see the lines from diagonal diagonal and the square grate in the center. It's all got to be cut. Make sure that all the pieces line up. And the grate should fit in the centre just like that. Mate, that is beautiful. Now it's always a good idea, especially in the shower base, to do a bit of planning. Mark out exactly where your tiles are going to go, cut them, dry fit them, remove them, and then you're ready to rock and roll. Alrighty, time for a bit of tiling. So, what sort of glue are you using, mate? Uh, basically using a cement-based uh, polymer modified glue. Yeah. You, you don't want to use a rubberized glue. The uh, water plays havoc with the rubber and your tiles will pop up. Ah, uh, right, okay. In a few years. Usually won't happen straight away, but it, it will happen at some point. Yeah. So, you wouldn't use a rubberized glue? Definitely not, no. no. Even though you can buy them? Yeah, and on the back of the packet, a lot of them say you can use in the bathroom, but you're better off not. Yeah, and you're using a 15 15mm trowel, yeah. It's a big trowel. You've got some nice sized tiles in here, 450s. Yep. A bit of a jigsaw puzzle here to put together. So you prefer to use a bigger trowel? They don't. What's the normal size? 10 mil? Uh, usually used in the bathroom or floor 12 mil, and on the walls 8 or 10. Yep. Um, but if you use a slightly bigger trowel, it just gives you a bit more glue to yep. push down or hold the tiles up. Yep. And when we talk about 12 mil or 15 mil, we're talking about the notch, the size of the notch. Yeah, it should leave 12 mil high of glue behind yeah. when you go over it. Yeah. So you place that first tile, you can see how <coughs> Justin's marked out on the floor where those tiles were going, so he just follows those lines. That's much easier. So you get it all set out nicely before you kick off. And hope for the best. Hope for the best. <laughs> I have faith. So this tile that we're doing now is going to slope down, isn't it? Yeah. Like an envelope. Yes. Which if it was one side of the tile, it would not stand a chance of doing. It just wouldn't get that further down to that no. clay, down yeah. to that drain. You'd end up having a flat tile in the middle and the water would just sit on that flat tile. Yep. Confused myself there for a second. It did, it did. And we've also got a 
really quite a thick floor waste. You have to take in, can, into account your floor waste at the yeah. same time. That's quite thick compared to a standard one's about only three mil thick. That's probably 12. Yeah. So we have to check that at the end as to whether it's going to sit below your tiles. Yeah. You don't want to sit above the top. <laughs> Otherwise the water won't get in. No. Let's see what we got. Yep. So now I can that sits down down three mil. Down three mil below the top of the tile. Yep, so now I can start sleeping those tiles and <clears throat> excellent. Which it's handy to have several different sides. Spirit levels. Yep. Because if you just try it with the big 1200, yep. you won't stand a chance. So we've got a 450 here. We yep. usually have an even smaller one as well. You're sloping that back, aren't you? So we... Yeah, sloping this one. Yeah, we don't want it level. No. So how much floor we got? Maybe at 5 mil? Maybe? I'm um, over this level. It'll probably only be about three mil because it's only a 450 mil. Yeah, over the size of it, yep. Yeah. Yep. You can I usually just do it by eye. If you can see the four, you've usually got enough. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've got too much. But yep. Is there ever such thing as too much four? In a shower? <laughs> no. <laughs> Plenty. See the, the bubble, you always try and get the bubble, especially in the shower. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what level you got, they're all pretty standard. Yeah. You always want to get the bubble at least partly through the line. The, the upper side line. Yeah. That's yeah. a good tip. So the bubble past that line on the upper side of the level. Yeah. And that way you don't have to keep lifting it up and, and guessing how much for you. Yeah. And you'll, you'll notice I uh, scrape the back of the tile with a bit of glue. Yep. Usually when you've got a fairly tricky tile that you don't know if it's going to sit quite right, height-wise. Yep. yep. You just scrape the back of the tile with a bit of glue. Yep. And it just levels out all the little... Yep. Some, some tiles have a lot of dimples. Yep. It just levels that out and it helps it really bond. Okay. So that you don't have to push it down as hard, it just helps it level. Yep, okay. The uh, smearing the back of the tile, the whole lot. Just placing down. Yeah, massage it just gently. You wiggle side to side, and it just. Yeah. So, do you bother the spaces, mate? You put spaces in yours? Uh, I probably will. Sometimes in a shower you have to because the fall makes the tile slide. Yeah. Actually, slide towards the middle. All right. So the space stops it from sliding. Yeah, they push up against each other. Mm. What's the trick to not having glue spew out between your joins? The trick is to always clean up while it's wet. Yeah. So don't wait for that glue to dry, otherwise you're in a world of yeah, hurt. Yeah, a lot of Stanley knife cutting to uh, get yeah. it Yeah. It does fit pretty hard. Yeah. So these tiles are ceramic tiles, they're not porcelain. Mm -hmm. What do you reckon, Matt, these days with the ceramics versus porcelain? Oh, I think if you're going industrial or commercial, you probably go porcelain just because they are a more solid tile, but it really depends how well you've stuck them down. If you've got no voids under them or air bubbles, yep. they'll be solid as. It shouldn't matter, should it? Yeah, if you drop something on it, it should be nice and solid under it. Yep. Usually you just crack the tile because your tiler hasn't put enough glue under it. Yep. And you've got a hollow point. And you, can also, you can also tell if you've got hollow points if you walk around in that noise. Yeah. That's a hollow noise, but when that dries, it'll change the so that noise, yeah, that noise. gotcha.
And you can get ceramic tiles now, can't you, with a square edge, so it looks like a porcelain tile. You can, yeah. Ceramic, if you're going to have a go at doing your own tiling, ceramic tiling, they're a lot easier to cut. Yep. And usually they will have a soft edge, which makes it a bit easier to lay. Yeah. Because you won't pick up on any lips, lips as much. Yeah. So when you say a soft edge, it's like a, a slight round, isn't it? A bit like a little ball nose. Yeah. yeah. So the glue we use, it comes in a powdered form, and you've got to mix it with water. Yep. But the rubberized glue, is it in powder form or? Uh, yeah, they're in powder form. Okay. You can, you can tell a rubberized glue from a normal glue because they have the little, little black black saucer on. Yeah, yeah. And that's basically, people think, oh, it's got rubber in it. It's got to be flexible. Yeah. It's not in there for flexibility. It gives you no flexibility at all. Right. It's just in there to make the glue go further. Really? It's absolutely a filler. So it makes the glue go a lot, a lot further. Right. No flexibility. Uh, yeah. uh, mate, I'll probably leave you to it, and uh, I've got some doors to hang, so we'll come back a bit later on. Yep. Okay, mate. See a lot more progress. Cheers. Got a plumber's crack. Got a plumber's crack there, mate. Looking good. <laughs> Wouldn't be made for water. That's right, mate. We have Dylan over here, the Sparky, and he's been putting in, we're cutting out the holes for the lights and the fans. Now he's just tackling the fans and the lights on the back deck. How's it all going, mate? Pretty good, mate. Pretty good. Making lots of holes. Making holes, looking good. Looking good so far. Excellent. No holes in the wrong spot, oh, as yet. I'll show you. <laughs> Very good. Keep it up, mate. And here we are getting close to the end of finishing our first floor in the main bathroom and you can really see from this shot how deep those notches are using that 15 mil trowel. Last couple to go mate. Yep. You'll notice I've done something different on this car. Yeah what'd you do mate? We'll see. Okay that's interesting. Interesting. What'd you do there, mate? Let me see. Let me see. Okay. No, you got me. Good edge. It's facing the angle. Oh, facing well done. Facing the angle. You can only do it if the angle's straight to the tile. Yep. And this one is. So the factory edge? Yep. It's against your angle so that no sharp edges stick up. Oh. Not that it's stick. Well done, mate. And it fits nicely under my door jam. Just. Just, that's how I wanted it. Beautiful. Good stuff. I'm cheap and no more gaps. <laughs> no, no more gaps in my jobs, mate. No, no more gaps. <laughs> so. Let's get this last time. And that's the floor tiling all done and I couldn't be any happier with how it turned out. Alright, well I hope you enjoyed and found that video useful and as per usual a big thumbs up is greatly appreciated and if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button for more handy tips and make sure you stick around for the next episode where Justin's going to be installing the wall tiles. Should be a good one. Set the time time for a cup of tea. So till then, I'm out of here. Cheers.